All right, well, here it is. I've been hinting about my new rifle build that I've been putting together for quite some time, and it's done. Um, this actually may look pretty familiar to a lot of you. Anybody that's been watching my videos for any period of time has probably seen what this rifle used to be. This used to be my old Tika 300 Win Mag with the uh, factory 24 inch sporter barrel. Um, it is much more than that now and that's what we're going to talk about. That's what we're going to get into. We're going to talk about what this has become, the unconventional way that I went about it, why that unconventional way makes a lot of sense, and the fact that you may want to build a Magnum rifle in the way that I have put this together. So, we'll start from the beginning. I picked this uh, old Tika T3 300 Win Mag up. Um, it was I found on on arms list a long time ago a long action, uh, a long action, left-handed action, Tika 300 Win Mag, that just is, a plain old sporter model. That is um, and it was at such a good deal I couldn't pass it up. Um, when I got and that, I, really the thing that I wanted from it was the action, and that's really all that's left of it now. Um, but the whole point behind it was to eventually build what I, what it has become today. Um, when I originally bought the rifle, I couldn't afford to build it out the way I wanted, but I also couldn't afford to pass up the deal that I had gotten on it. So, the, the uh, title is not a typo. This is a short action ultra mag built on a long action. You may be saying to yourself, well, that is just just stupid. Why would anybody want to build a short action on a long action? The whole point of a short action ultra mag is it so you can have a magnum in a short action. And that is true to a point. But um, in doing my research and deciding exactly what, how I wanted to build this rifle out, came to a, few, a couple of conclusions. Um, my original plan was to build a uh, a seven millimeter dash 300 which is a, a, a caliber that's became very popular over the last few years um, and it is a seven it's a 300 wind mag neck down to seven millimeter um, that is a very high velocity seven millimeter um, and that was my original plan with this but after doing a lot of research um, people that were building those rifles out on a long action or playing on long action or having problems running the the higher BC bullets that that you are that seven millimeter has in seven millimeter there are a lot of really high especially for caliber um, high ballistic coefficient bullets that can be that can be loaded into a seven millimeter um, it requires the right twist which is what this is this is a one and eight twist. Um, but if you want to run the 175s and up, you're going to need a 1 and 8 twist. But a lot of guys that were building these 7 300s were building them with a little bit slower twist because they couldn't they couldn't build the 1 and 8 twists out and be able to seat their bullets to mag length and still still fit them in the standard long action magazine. Or they couldn't seat their bullets out to the lands and still fit them in the standard long action magazine. So after looking at that, and I decided I wanted to do a little more research before I had before I finally settled on it. And then I I have been aware of the seven seven millimeter short action ultra mag and all the other three hundred som and the six five som all the soms for quite a while. Um, but after really comparing numbers. I found that you don't really in a in a seven short action ultra mag you're not losing actually hardly any if any at all velocity to the seven three hundred. Um, so that became very interesting to me. And then I read a, a couple of threads where guys were building their seven psalms out on long actions and having really good luck with them. They were able to run the one and eight twist barrels and run the super high BC bullets that a seven millimeter allows. So what I picked was the 
Uh, it could be any of the 180 class or up bullets, actually. But uh, what I started with, you guys know I like the uh, ELDM bullets. And uh, Hornady makes their 180 grain ELDM match in a 7 millimeter. This thing has an advertisement. This is advertised BC, so take this with a grain of salt because when I when I've done after I've trued my data, it's a little bit less than this. But they advertise a G1 BC of 0.796, so basically a 0.8 G1 and a G7 of 0 0.401. Now, I'll, I, I do all my ballistic calculations with the G7. There are many reasons, many reasons for that, and one of these days maybe we'll, we'll do a video on the difference between the two and why I choose the G7 over the G1, and, and I think for the most part, most people do. But anyway, um, after truing my data, I came up with a .377 on my G7 BC. Um, so not that far off and still just stupid high for a smaller caliber. So you got a caliber that has not a lot of recoil. I can seat the bullets out to the lands, run them in my mag, not have to single feed, and get super high ballistic coefficients and velocities topping over 2,900 feet per second with the 180 class bullets which is the load that I have worked up for this so far is just a hair over 2900 feet per second so the transonic wall according to my numbers I have not taken this thing out past 1200 yet but the transonic wall is at 1780 yards at the altitude that I'm at that I shoot at which is over a mile for a seven millimeter to go transonic so that is the, the route I took with my seven millimeter magnum and to me it makes a lot of sense it's exactly what I wanted it's a very specialized very, very specialized rig um, and like I said it's exactly what I wanted and I could not be happier with it um, so the barrel that we went with um, I, you guys know I, I do a lot of prefits. I, I like my prefits. Um, and McGowan, uh, McGowan Precision is one of the few companies that will chamber a, a SOM in a prefit. Um, I think there's McGowan and uh, oh, Pacnor. I think those are about the only two companies that I've found that will chamber a SOM in a prefit. And uh, I went with the McGowan for a couple of reasons. Those are neither here nor there, but uh, could not be happier with it. Uh, the very first group that I shot with this thing after doing a, a, a barrel break-in, which the barrel break-in that I do is not much of a break-in. I, I do, a, while I'm sighting the rifle in, I usually do a shot, run a dry patch through, make my adjustment, do a shot, run a dry patch, do it through. Usually four or five shots of, and then dry patches after the first four or five and that's my break-in, so not a lot of break-in. So I did that, and my first group, was a five-shot group, um, didn't have the velocities quite up to, to where I wanted them, but uh, check this out. I mean, it was a just over quarter minute for the very first group out of the rifle with a barrel that has, has not even really built up any copper fouling. So, that told me right off the bat that this thing was gonna shoot. Um, since then, I, I have not. I've only I've only ran about 70 rounds through this thing so far. I took it out one time to distance. I I did a I put put a target at a thousand. I shot a five shot group. Um, the thing group. And check this out. This thing group uh, right at four inches at a thousand and twenty yards. So under well under half minute right around three eighths of a minute at over a thousand yards so could not be happier with that and this was in about a seven mile an hour wind um and then i took it out uh busted a couple of things uh, busted a uh, two liter bottle out at like 1260 and that's really all the the long range i've done with this so far but that is the point of this um, i put this together um 
seven psalm is is really it, there's a couple of reasons I, I wanted to do a magnum seven um one is for f class um a lot of guys are going to the seven millimeters in f class um just because they they offer such a high bc they really buck the wind so it's going to offer a lot of consistency in f class and before i shoot this in any of my f class matches i will probably Put it in a different chassis. I, I've had this chassis for a long time. Well, actually, when I bought this chassis for the Tika in the 300 Win Mag, um, MDT was one of the only companies that offered a chassis that was a Tika long action with a left-handed option. Um, so I uh, that's that's what I went with at the time, and they only had a couple of options for that, and one of them was the LSS. I like the chassis. I just want a longer fore end, um, especially for for F class shooting to have more stability. So before I shoot this in any F class matches, I'll probably eventually drop it into a new chassis with a little longer fore end. But other than that, could not. I, I, there's nothing lacking on the way I have this set up to the way that I want it. Um, the other reason that I got the that I put this rifle together was. And probably the main reason is for ELR shooting um, with these with these super high BCs and the high velocities that I'm able to push these seven millimeters at. Um, this thing is going to really stretch out well. Um, I plan on taking this thing out and doing the furthest shots that I've ever done. I plan on that's one of the main reasons I put this rifle together. I want to want to be able to want to have a rifle that I can take out to 2500 and beyond and and be able to do it consistently and I think with this setup I have that so you will be seeing a lot more videos with this setup um, I want to just do a video knock it out real quick and, and explain the rifle build that I've been kind of hinting around about uh, what it is why I went the way that I went with it and why it may make sense for you um, to do a short action magnum on a long action and it doesn't have to be the seven it can be the the 300 or the the 30 cal psalm or the, the wsm um or the the 65 any of those short action magnums can really benefit from a long action so that is what it is um, i'm looking forward to getting this thing out to some, some extreme distances. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I've got the new the new Athlon Ares uh, scope on here. That's uh, one of the reasons I bought this scope was was for this build that I was putting together. So it's it has a little bit more adjustment than the scope that I had on this previous. Uh, so all that should equal up to a rifle that I can really stretch its legs on. Um, and I'll probably eventually one day order some sort of adjustable base, something that I can can really get some some uh, elevation out of. So that is what it is. This is my seven millimeter short action ultra mag built on the Tika long action. I hope y'all enjoy. I hope y'all enjoyed this look at it. Hope it uh, allowed you all something to think about. And I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.